Okay, guys. Thanks, everybody, for... Uh, No problem, no problem. <laughs> Thank you everybody for coming here today and thanks for attending my session. I did one uh, uh, 15 years ago or so and, uh, and probably it's the last time I spoke publicly so uh, I'm not that used to it, although I'm well able to talk. Um, so sincerely, thank you for coming. I was counting up how many components I had to get here and yesterday I got to 11 components. I, I got a lift from my house to a bus by my mother and then I got a bus to the airport and I took a plane and then I took a train and then I had a hotel and so I counted to 11 components just to get here. And then I realized that there's still a few more bits because we had to book the flight and book the hotels and pay Cathy and, and, and book something else. So in total this morning I counted to 15 things that were involved in being here and then everybody that's here did that. So thank you for your 15 components as well. <laughs> um, I want to talk about MFA and DNN, and I really don't know if everybody here at the conference, if 80% of people already have MFA enabled and they're using various different ones, or if 85% of people are single factor authentication. Um, I sort of have a, a guesstimate that 85% are using single factor. Um, and to, to do something different, it seems like a high hill to climb. Um, I'm hoping at the end of this presentation that you can go home and in 15 minutes put MFA on your .NET Nuke website, and unless you've got thousands and thousands of people logging in every day, it's free. So if you think that MFA is good, um, then hopefully that's going to be useful to you. So um, thank you to the sponsors. Uh, again, I had a look at the accounts from last year, so I say thank you to the sponsors because we wouldn't be here uh, with them. I guess it would be 1,200 euro to attend. So thank you to the sponsors. They're making the, the event happen. Uh, why would we do it? Uh, how? And then I'll show you some costs as well. Um, and also, for the sake of discussion, I also have a slide on why we would not do MFA. There's a few reasons why not to do it, uh, so we can talk about that. Um, so, I don't want to tell you guys what you already know, um, but I guess that, uh, and I have one or two websites still that I don't have MFA turned on, but I think we know we should have a brute force attack, a guess, uh, a password that's left lying around somewhere, and they compromise your website. Even if it's a small website and it's not, it's not a government website, but reputational damage is a serious thing. Um, and if they can get into your site uh, through uh, our regular authentication, then they're in and they can do whatever they want. Uh, we did have a government website in Ireland that my brother is a security expert and he was called in because they had put sex ads and stuff like that in, uh, back in white text so that they were not visible, but they, got, they started getting spam blocked from, from other places around Europe and they had to contact and say, we're getting the band block and we don't see why. And they had been compromised. And uh, so we, in, in summary, we, sh we should have it. Uh, the first one though, uh, and I won't read all of those, uh, but the first one is when you're talking to your customer and he doesn't know much about computers, but he said, and is this that, that authentication factor thing that, that I hear everybody talking about? I had to turn it on in my Outlook and I turned it on in my Gmail. And, and he says, do you have that? You can't say no. You just can't. You can't say, well, you know, I've been meaning to get around to it and I can, I can send you an SMS or something like that if you want. So you want to just be able to say, of course, uh, we're hosted on a reliable platform and of course we're MFA, the same as Google and Microsoft. Any more questions on that? And probably he'll say, okay, that's enough for me. Uh, that's more, more technical than I, and, than I want to be. Um, but there's, there's uh, compliance. If you have any sort of body related to government at all, then you want to be sort of compliant. Um, I put uh, the first one there is uh, enhanced user trust. So not just the, the, the owner of the company or the owner of the client, whoever it is, but the people, the users, we've one customer and uh, then they have sort of thousands of users, some of which are conducting their business on our platform. Um, those people want to protect their, their company and their business. And even though in our case, they wouldn't be highly technical, um, but they've got plenty of money going through it, millions of euro going through it, 
and they know something about MFA. They know something about that. They've, they've had to do it with their email. And so if the platform that we give them is not enabled with MFA, they might not say anything to you. They mightn't even be brave enough to pick up the phone and call you. But when the other salesman arrives and he starts saying, of course, our environment is MFA and uh, that one is not, then next thing you know, uh, you've lost your customer. Um, so I guess I don't really have to say anymore. We, we should be like that. Um, so uh, I, I'm delighted to do the presentation. I don't hold myself up as an expert in this subject matter, but I, I do sort of say that I'm somebody who's been interested in it for some time. Um, there's not that many ways that I know of to make it easy. Um, and, and for the sake of this discussion, I'm excluding where everybody's in a corporate environment and already have a Microsoft or Google Enterprise account. So if, if you're already 300 people in the company and they already have Microsoft 365, then you'll probably use SAML or something like that. Um, but for, for the likes of what a lot of Dot .NET Nuke is, where you've got five or 10 or 50 or a few hundred users on Yahoo and on Microsoft and on traditional email, and then how can you achieve it? One way is with SMS. Um, the trouble with SMS is they're about five cent a message. And if you start multiplying thousands of logins per month, you immediately realize that it's going to be costing you 10, 20, 30,000 euro per year. So unless you're, it's a very valuable business application, then that's probably out. Um, we have uh, a project with thousands of users across Ireland, um, but they wouldn't be highly technical. And so trying to explain to them, download a thing called an authenticator app onto your Nokia phone, and then you'll be able to scan a 2D barcode, and she says, what's a barcode? And you're lost already, you're gone. So you lock the customers out. Um, another customer, I spoke to him and said, we can make your system more secure. And he said, Mark, I need my customers to log in here. I get revenue from them. I'm not going to make it more difficult. So he wasn't prepared to put up a barrier. Um, so. Uh, you know, the first and second one are a nuisance. Uh, hardware tokens, uh, quite specialized, uh, biometric authentication, which I'm noticing is creeping into my life more now that I'm saying yes to certain prompts. Um, but that's also not, uh, not very easy to implement with DNN. Um, some of the kind of push notifications uh, that you can do through apps that you might install on the phone, again, it's out of scope for 99%. That, that's what I just used in the last 48 hours or so, Daniel. I used it a few times on this machine, and I, I see that that's coming. Um, I've spoken to the, uh, the company that I'm going to show you some of their stuff on today. Um, he had some comments that I didn't put up here because I wasn't confident enough to say it, but he said you can run into a performance issue uh, with bias uh, something, I can't remember just the second word that he said, uh, but at least I, I agree to passkey is something and probably we'll see more and more of that. Um, even I'm sort of semi-technical and I was a bit reluctant for the last few years to say yes because I'm not completely sure, am I putting my password to my bank into my Apple Macintosh and if I do, do I want it to be there? Maybe I feel a bit more safe when it's in LastPass, and that doesn't mean that it's trustworthy either. So uh, this, uh, well, I, I found it a bit ambiguous, but I, I having to say, I am converted, and uh, I do use passkey on this all the time. Um, so put a few more. Um, I have to use an application for, on behalf of a customer, and I have to log in every day, and every damn day I get a password, a uh, passcode sent to me. Um, and it's a pain in the ass. And after doing it the first five or 6,000 times, I've started to think that it's a bit archaic. It seems, it seems kind of stupid that you go to log in and every damn time and he sends you a, a code. And actually I automate it. I wrote a little macro that does it automatically for me, which is kind of handy. Um, so you could also get them to call you and all that kind of stuff. But uh, in and security questions, your your favourite dog and, and all of that stuff uh, is also very difficult. What I started doing, uh, I think I can share it with everybody here because you're all trustworthy. But favourite city, favourite dog, and, and favourite food. I put a dog, a food, and a city. 
capital A, capital first letter. So, I, so now when I find an old computer I haven't seen in seven years and I can't remember, don't know the password and the lady has left the company and it says questions, you know, favorite uh, conference, I just add uh, conference, add uh, dog and add uh, food and I'm in. <laughs> so, but that's not secure, you know. <laughs> so if you want to hack some computers in uh, Ireland, you know where to go now. So. Um, so there might be a few more. Again, I'm just ruling out uh, the corporate environment where Microsoft Exchange, Microsoft Enter, Microsoft 365 is already there. But we could keep looking. But unless, you know, we'll talk later, I'll, I'll get to the presentation first, but maybe you guys have seven other very, very simple options, but I didn't know how to do it. And so Inertia took over and I did nothing. And, and that was it. Um, and then I was reading an article in the Irish Times newspaper and I saw a comment from somebody, uh, there was a guy who wrote a, an article about authentication and saying that, you know, we're leaving our uh, ownership of our knowledge with two or three big companies and pretty soon they're going to have access to all of our world um, and he wanted to explore something about zero-based knowledge. And I saw a comment uh, just on the newspaper that said, already done, uh, check out miracle.com. So I just went onto their website. Um, well, sorry, first of all, do we really need uh, MFA? And at the end of the, the last slide is we'll discuss when we don't want it. But I propose to you that we do because we will be hacked sooner or later. So these guys have an MFA solution and uh, I don't work for them, I'm not on commission, I'm not paid by them, I don't have any commercial relationship other than I'm starting to use their product. Uh, so go and do your own research and, and read their white papers about how they work. Uh, in summary, they say that they have a zero knowledge based authentication. That's what they're saying and you do your own research to see what you think that means and if you feel that it's safe. Um, I mentioned my brother's a security expert and he's also taken a look into it to see what he thinks and he's going to ask another colleague of his who he says is even better at application security and so I'm waiting just on some feedback from him. Um, but what you're going to see here is probably this is secure because they've got plenty of customers and it's massively easy to log in. So even park all the security, what you're going to see is convenience for customers. Um, so go and check it out yourself, uh, and if you're not happy with it, uh, give them a call. Uh, I'm, I'm just telling you that I'm using it, but you know, uh, we've no contract. So um, they say it's secure. Uh, uh, everybody can form their own opinion on that. And they say it's simple, and they say that 99.9% .9 are successfully logged in on first go. So that I can vouch for. Uh, it's a joy to use. Um, it's easy enough to deploy. Um, You'll see Bicenza's contribution in a minute to it, uh, but in general, uh, again, like after the first 6,000 hours of development, it's really easy now, <laughs> sense. Uh, so it's not expensive. It's not free, uh, but it's not expensive. Um, and convenience and uh, cost, uh, you, you start to say, okay, is it convenient? Do I want it or do I not? But it's not that expensive. Um, and it's quite powerful. I'm only going to show you the basics today, but you can do quite a bit more sophisticated stuff in it if, if you had a very uh, uh, valuable project or the customer wanted a higher level of security. Um, so uh, I just took this text and this graphic from their website. Um, so uh, as I understand it and reading a little bit about it, there's a secret generated on your machine with a pin that you're going to use. Uh, they stay on your machine. Uh, they generate a token and then you send that token to Miracle. Miracle store the token. And in future, then you can uh, recreate that token and send it to them. And if your token matches, then they say, okay, it must be Mark Breen because he has he's done some stuff. Um, so I'll, I'll keep going. Um, and the first is just to log into a website. Okay, so this is a DNN site. Okay, so this is a, a DNN 
site 913 that I installed just a couple of days ago, and I'm going to log in. So I click log in, my P keypad comes up, I put in my PIN, and I'm in, and that's it. I just logged into .NET Nuke with, with the multi-factor authentication. My PIN for that machine is 1111, but that only works if you get my Mac. So you have to get my computer, and you have to get Chrome. It's not the, the, the PIN that's on Safari on this Macintosh, and it's not the PIN that's on my Windows computer at home, and it's not the PIN that's on my mobile phone. So it's based on a cookie that's in this browser on this Mac, and if I clear my cookies, I'll lose the thing, and I'll have to re-register the device. So I'm just going to do it again. Uh, because this is where you're, if, if this is of interest to you and if you think that you might deploy it for a customer, um, and we have deployed it with most of our important customers, um, this is what they do every morning. They come to their website, they do that, they put in their pin, click, 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 and they're in. And to be perfectly honest, I use 1111 because it's the fastest way to do on nearly every installation I have. But again, unless you get my device and, and get the cookie from my machine, you probably won't log into my customer's uh, system. So let's have a look and see. Well, just a question. Yeah. Uh, you're a little bit like you do not have to enter a password. So it's not multi-factor um, Well, Daniel, I'm interested in that uh, to see if the. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the multi-factor means you know something and you have something. Yeah. So you know something, you know your. You know the pin. And your yeah. Pin sure, your sure. Sure, sure. Well, yeah, yeah, you have to have the cookie, yeah, you have to have the cookie, yeah. And again, uh, I'm not the sales rep for Miracle, so uh, you, if you decide that you're interested in doing this, you'll have to go to Miracle's website yourself and assure yourself of whether or not uh, what they're doing. They call the facility, they offer Miracle Trust, and I've been discussing with my brother in the last few days, do we really consider this MFA? Is it really multi-factor authentication or, or, or is it something that's called Miracle Trust where it's something subtly different than pure MFA? Um, but, but we'll keep going and you'll see how it works and, and you may eventually say it is MFA. At, at least if I go to that guy's computer over there, uh, my 1111 will not work because he doesn't have my cookie. So that's certain. Then I have to register his device. And to register his device, we're going to use an email. Uh, so then, so yeah. The pin can be different on uh, every different device? It, it, can, it can be different, or it might be the same. same. Yeah. And, and also on the browsers on your machine. Go into incognito, and it won't work. Yeah. So, so multi factor, uh, um, the, again, there's some talk about Miracle. There's to be something you have, something you know, and, and some place you are. That's three factor. And on their site, they say nowadays most people are willing to uh, kind of accept it just as two factor. Um, but, but at least if you have this working, you most likely have access to the person's computer and have access to their email. And if they're using any kind of a modern email where they've got MFA turned on in the email as well, you've got a, another layer of protection. So I wouldn't use it if you own a bank. Maybe you don't do this. You know, with a bank, you might uh, have an app and people are prepared to spend 15 minutes to get into their bank. Um, in my own bank in Ireland, there's a, we have a private bank and then the company bank, and the company bank is even more difficult to get into. But we're prepared to do that because the cash is there, you know. Uh, but when I want to get my sports results from my website, I want to feel secure enough, but I want to be in there fast. And um, I think this is what it, it does. So, but you don't show what you have to do the first time you log in. You'll say that, you know. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm going I'm to show you. I'll sh I'll sh we're going to do an installation on a vanilla DNN site. Um, so there's a company called ProxIT that had a seven-year-old project on GitHub, and it seems there's been no activity since there. Um, uh, Besense coded the module that you're seeing here today. Um, Margin funded it. Um, and we have it running for nearly two years, I suppose. And, and we started off with the, the least important websites, afraid to put it onto bigger customers in case we locked them out. Uh, but we've had no problems with it. Um, so I'm just calling out. Uh, we haven't been in contact with this uh, Prox IT, uh, so we don't know them. But it's a fork uh, on GitHub of, of a, a beginning module that they did that did, I think maybe didn't do anything. Yeah. 
So but anyway, just to give them respect. Um, and we haven't published it on <laughs> GitHub, uh, but at least anybody who wants to use it uh, is welcome to the code, and we might decide to fully open source it or not, uh, based on your feedback, actually. Um, so how to set it up? Uh, I'm going to try to do this now as a demo and, and see can I really make it in two or three minutes. So what you've got to do is go to Miracle's website, create an account, which should take 30 seconds. Uh, then you create an application, uh, which should just take a, a moment or two. Um, and then they'll give us a client ID and a secret key, which we'll save into Notepad, and that's step one complete. And then we'll go over to step two, and we'll take our vanilla DNN site, we'll drop in the module that we built, we'll put in these one, two, three, four, five parameters, uh, click a couple of checkboxes, and we'll be finished, and we'll have a DNN site with MFA turned on and working. Um, so if the <laughs> demo doesn't go bad for me, then that's what we're going to do. Uh, yeah, so we'll assign an app name, uh, we'll set our URL, um, and uh, you'll see me doing it. Uh, I haven't reported to Miracle, but I do intend to let them know that um, when you set your URL, <coughs> if that L for some reason is in lowercase, it doesn't work. So uh, you just have to watch that. Um, so, so let's see, can we, we do the demo? I think I'll just pull up this. Okay, so miracle.com is their website. Uh, I'm going to uh, sorry, not that one. I'm going to sign up. sure if I need this uh, phone number or not. Okay, so now it's going to do the, the registration of this device. So they're using their own authentication on their website. Um, and so it's going to uh, send, me, send me a link. So I click the link. And click. And we'll use 1111 as our handy code. Okay, so that's, the, uh, that's the, a brand new account created with these guys' website, and they kick it off with a project. So there's already a project there, which they gave the, the name of the account. Um, on my, in the margin one, I've got 10 projects for 10 customers, and you, if you want a new project, you just add a project. To add a project, you only have to fill in one value, just the name of the project. Um, but I'll use the one that's already there, and we want to create an application. Okay. So we'll add an app, uh, and I'm going to give it the name DNN Conf9133, and I have a, a site ready to go with it, which is my third one. So it's 9133 three is, the, is the first two I, I, I deleted. So that's my, my third uh, setup. And then I need my redirect URL. And for this new site, then uh, it, has, it has an extra uh, three. Yeah. OK, so we'll add the app. Um, and then I need these two values. So uh, 
if you forget to copy the secret, uh, you don't get another shot, but you could just trash the old one and create a new one and just use the new one and, and deploy it back to your site if you, if you needed to. Okay, um, that's that. And we're almost finished. Is a cosmetic. A cosmetic nice to have, which is, uh, you'll see in a couple of minutes, where if you have an icon for your, your customer, your project, if you put in the URL to your icon, you'll see it coming up in a couple of minutes. Um, so I'll save those changes. Um, and I'll turn off this. Uh, mobile because it's got to do with an authenticator app, so you don't use that. Um, and that's all you really have to do. Um, there's one other optional one. Uh, sorry, thank you. Um, so there's one other option one. If you have a, a website URL where they can get help if they cannot log in, um, or an email address or a phone number, you can fill those in there uh, and put them in. Um, I'll do it just so you can see it when we go there. Okay. And that's that bit finished. So uh, we go back to PowerPoint. Um, so we've we've given it a, a name. I called it DNN nine thirteen three version three. Uh, we've set our redirect URL. Um, we've saved the client ID. Uh, we've disabled the mobile login. Um, and uh, we've we've put in some branding as well. So and that that is that is all you have to do on the miracle uh, side. Um, so the next step then is we'll take a vanilla uh, DNN and we'll drop in the module, we'll paste in those five values and we'll be finished. So again, let's hope that uh, it works for me. So this is 9133.demo.martin.e. Uh, And just compare how long it's taken me to log in on this site that we know and love. Uh, I mean, it's not long, but it's still, I mean, to 30 seconds, you know, by the time I get to click my button. Um. <coughs> so, I'll go to extensions, install. I noticed uh, when preparing for it that it's uh, just no harm to to reload the site and then uh, we'll be able to get into our settings. So 
So the site's back up. Uh, we go into our extensions, go to authentication systems, click the uh, pencil to edit the provider. And we have three URLs, which I'm going to copy paste, uh, which we will give you, uh, and that uh, app key and the secret key that we got a few minutes ago. So, and this is the, the key that I copied, the, the kind of the client key, which is public. And this is the secret key that they gave us. Okay. And then lastly, we have to enable it. So I have two ways to do the demo. Leave those two boxes unticked. Um, and uh, if something goes wrong, I might get embarrassed or tick them and we cross our fingers and if I tick them and if it works perfect then we're finished. So we'll go with the, uh, we'll do the risky one because uh, <laughs> why not? So that should be it, I'm finished. Um, I say risky, first of all nobody here would do this directly on your live site but, but on your test site even still what you might do is not tick them, uh, open another session, make sure that everything is working and keep your authenticated session here in case you've just screwed yourself. Um, after you've done it, you know, uh, plenty of times, then you start to get a bit more confident. But uh, so, so if everything is right, uh, this is all set up. Uh, I've already saved that. So now we can log out. And now we're logged out. So this is our DNN 913.3.3. Log in. And so it says, ah, here's a device that I've never seen before. So you're welcome to attempt to log in. Uh, please register your device. And it sent me an email. I closed that tab. Go back to my inbox. There's the email. Click one 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 one, and this website now has MFA installed on it, uh, and that's as long as it takes. And I don't have to do anything else with it. We're finished. Just on the email address. On the email address, yeah. So, so, so what what has happened there is, uh, I installed the module. Um, I didn't, I, because I was brave, I didn't leave the two authentication systems set up. Um, and I started at 10 past, quarter past. 20 minutes. 20 minutes left, yeah. So, um, so I installed the module. Um, you have a choice with the module to leave both authentication systems working. Let's call that a back door in case you screw yourself in your presentation. Uh, and then we have two tabs on it. You can log in with username and password. And if you wanted to try that for a week or two, you know, if you felt nervous. Um, but I, because I was brave, I turned it off. And so I've only enabled one authentication. The user called mark.breen at margin.ie was already set up on this .NET Nuke website. And you had seen me logging in initially as mark.breen at margin.ie. So that user has now just logged in. Uh, we, our module has sort of said, OK, I know who that guy is. He's registered on the site. Uh, then it did its business with Miracle. Uh, Miracle sent back the token, and, and we can log in and log out. Yeah. Yeah. And you need to have access to his email. With, with your .NET Nuke site, yeah. The, the, um, yes, Sasha. And you can also register a new user 
Well, I'll, I'll go on to the end. In the last slide, we, we can discuss some of that stuff because there's quite a bit of complexity in that discussion that, that you're doing. So in short, let's say in an initial website where you've got 30 or 500 people already registered, um, that would be the first use case. Uh, or, or even better, you've got three people registered. You know, the, the customer who does our updates on the site, you and, and two other people in the company. For those kind of ones, it is really trivial to add it. Uh, and you still get those benefits uh, of customer, uh, customer confidence uh, straight away. Um, let me go back to... Okay, so we've done... We, we've installed it, we set, set five parameters and we've logged in and um, for, for a regular site, uh, that's uh, all you, that you need to do. Um, we've done that bit. Uh, <coughs> I set automatic login to true. If I had left that false, you'd have seen two tabs, one for username and password and one for um, uh, to log in with Miracle. I, I kind of thought it'd be more impressive to do it uh, straight away, but uh, more conservative to do it the other way. Enable this feature, which I did enable. Um, we can do uh, website.com slash login question mark no IDC. And surprise, surprise, you see the username and password and you can get back in. So again, let's call that a backdoor. Will I show you? Well, <laughs> we, we don't want it to always work, Daniel, because otherwise we don't have MFA on our site. Yeah. But, but we, let's say if we're going live with a brand new site, we don't tell the customer that there's a backdoor uh, because if they have to do their financial trading straight away that morning and we've somehow screwed up the installation, we can give them the no, IT, no IDC solution. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this site is the one that we used a minute ago. Uh, sorry, I didn't log out. Um, so this site, if we log out and we log in, we can't use our traditional .NET Nuke um, login. Um, but if we do our no IDC, it's no IDC equals one. Uh, equals one. Yeah, and that's it. And so if you turn on that option, so if, if, you leave, if you leave the checkbox disabled, you always see those two tabs and you can debug, as Vicen says. Um, if you, but if you turn it on, then the customer doesn't even know it's there. But we, we don't leave it on. We typically might leave it on for the first one or two days, just in case. Uh, I would say even we're probably more confident now and we just turn it off straight away. Yeah, then, uh, well, that would be, an, uh, yeah, if there was a service interruption with Miracle and the customer couldn't get in, then we could go into the database, set you no know, IDC on, and everybody can reset their own password. If it's been two years since they used the password, they won't remember it. Cool, but, but yeah, and they could, they could get in with the traditional mechanism, yeah. Comparing things to ADD2C or sure. whatever. Sure, sure. Okay, so um, just a couple of gotchas and a note. So you can't have duplicate emails on the project. Um, we had one site that we want to use it with 30 or 40,000 people and all of them apart from say five or 10 were unique email addresses. So that one is easy enough for us to solve. But we had another one with 50,000 users uh, which are typically parents and their children and the children, you know, starting from age eight, so they don't have duplicate emails. So we had to do something slightly different uh, for those, but we actually have it working and we're going to go live with that in the next couple of weeks as well. So, so but for, for this module that you're seeing here today that you can just drop in and go, um, you, you need to have uh, unique emails and you need to run some SQL that is just a few lines, but we, can, we have it as part of our script anyway to convert the usernames to their email address. Um, and you just have to be careful that you catch them all, not just the user's table, which everybody here knows. Um, and uh, on the Miracle 
site that I, the Miracle account that we created, uh, you can have five or 10 or 15 projects, uh, let's say one per customer, and then typically one app per customer. Um, but we've got one customer that has shared, uh, has two or three apps, so, so you can put multiple apps within a project. Um, there's some subtleties there uh, to be careful of, but I, I won't get into it just yet. Okay, so what's the cost? So on Miracle's website, they claim to be a thousand uses per month, free forever. Um, that's what they say. So I hope they honor that. Um, but again, you'd have to send them a fax or a letter if they don't kind of honor it. It's not, I'm not representing Miracle. Um, but a thousand uses per month is pretty, pretty good. And for low volume websites, that might serve significant number of our needs. Um, you know, if I think of customers where there's 10 or 12 or 14 people in the office, uh, that will pretty much work. Um, they have a calculator on the website, and so I did some maths with that just to get a couple of samples. So if you have 100 users and they're logging in every day, um, then you're looking at, uh, they're based in the UK, so it'll be a tenor sterling. Um, so if you really had a 100 users in a customer, I, I think it's incremental, Michael. Uh, yeah. uh, honestly, I don't know, yeah. but it, but it, I don't I don't think it's that tricky one where if you're if you're nine 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 nine, it's a tenner, and if you're a thousand and one, it's cost you four hundred and fifty. I don't think it's that. So I, I think it's a pro rata. I, I yeah. It's really for, for it's, it's a little more. It's very small. He he. Uh, I've been talking to the CTO. I think is his title. And, No, so, no. But they calculate, they calculate and, and bill you how, how many how many uses, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So in summary, you can slice it and dice it. I worked four or five or six examples. They all came to be approximately 0 0.08, 0 0.8 of, a, of an English penny. So a cent. It's a cent to log in uh, if you get into quantities. Um, and initially, you kind of think it's almost free. Um, but if you have 30,000 users and they're logging in three times a month, you're suddenly going to have a bill of 700 pounds sterling a month. So that wouldn't work. And for us, we have a bit of a challenge with that because we want to roll it out with the site with 6,000 people. Um, and 6,000 is quite a bit. And if they log in a few times a day, then we could suddenly run into fairly large bills very, very quickly. Um, one option for that is to extend the lifetime of the cookie. Um, and so we did it a couple of weeks ago with one of the sites that it's turned on. Um, so about three weeks ago, we extended the lifetime to be, I think, seven days. So if you touch the site within seven days, the cookie is refreshed. So I haven't logged in on that website since. Um, you might smile and say, but Mark, that's crap because you told me you were going to give me MFA and you kind of talked about that it might be free, but now I have to leave my app authenticated for three weeks in a row. But then Gmail does that for me as well. So Gmail also lets me stay logged in. So uh, I'm just telling you what we've done. Uh, we, can, we can say what doesn't work with it, but, but in summary, uh, and then there's another one, which is that you may charge the customer. If the customer wants MFA, uh, you may charge a customer. And if we went back to the first and second slide, um, if he wants to pay for SMSs, he's looking at five cent plus VAT. Um, so if this is a cent, a click, then it, it's... Uh, but even forget about the cost for the moment. The convenience of the login is what trumps it for me. I mean, there's no way to, to get in that fast. If your browser has the password remembered, um, you probably will get in as fast if you're using LastPass and you have to use your mouse and go over to it, it still won't be as fast. Um, so for the customers that we've deployed it to, um, I've been sort of keeping in, in variable touch with them over the last couple of years and one lady has about 15 or 20 swim instructors, so it's kind of late teenagers, early 20s, and I've been asking her how did they like it. Um, so it's not exactly enormous market research, but she says they think it's great. Um, another large corporate customer uh, doing energy trading, financial uh, energy trading. And so we've deployed it with them and th they think that it's seamless um, and they don't talk about it. And probably that's also um, 
some some good news. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you to the sponsors. Uh, say again, we wouldn't be here without the sponsors, so thank you. <laughs>